coincidentally, to the next topic. Um, you know, I, I kind of have some plans for myself um, moving forward. Uh, at some point, the fire department's going to have to continue to move forward without Tom Roach as the fire chief. Um, I've talked a little bit about Eric with that. Uh, I have an idea on when that might be for myself, but with that being said, it kind of leaves us as to what are we going to do when that happens. Um, I'm more than willing to put in as much time and energy to help the district figure that out. Um, I'm also not going anywhere tomorrow, so I'm not going to you know, leave the department or the district um, with a, a level of uncertainty and not having a good plan in place. Um, I think the commission talked a little bit about some sort of a committee being formed to look at a few different options that might be available. A lot of this work has been done previously. Leah was a part of the sustainability committee a few years ago that looked at some things. I think those things are still options that very, you know, ready options that the, the district could consider. Um, but I think there needs to be a little homework done prior to that. Uh, so I don't want to get ahead of what those options are. I'm just looking for probably the board to come up with a committee, maybe who serves on it, that committee could meet and figure out what their charter is and what they're going to study. Um, you know, I don't think we're looking to reinvent the wheel. I think a lot of this stuff has been done already in the county and elsewhere in the state. Um, you know, there was discussion of maybe hiring a consultant. I think that's a waste of money. I think you have professionals both within Marinwood CSD and in other departments that can that have experience in this and can help us along in the process. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. The, the fire commission did make a recommendation to the board that they form. I think they called it an ad hoc committee, which means we'd be subject to the Brown Act rules and regulations. Uh, put a committee together, include stakeholders, and figure out what it is we want to study moving forward, and then get to work on this. Any comments? Yeah, sure. Um, I was at the uh, commission meeting, and um, I listened to the, to the discussion, and I believe that for a number of reasons, not just your departure sure for a number of reasons um, it's a very very timely thing to create a committee and start looking at um, all angles of the fire service and the delivery <coughs> of that fire service here in Marinwood um, from a financial and an operational standpoint and um, I think a committee is warranted I think we discussed at that meeting having a board member um, sit on it there was either one or two fire commissioners that were interested in sitting on it. Um, the district manager yourself, you know, clearly would be involved. And I agree with you about consultants. Um, I think that, you know, there's been a recent merger. Um, I'm not saying the merger is going to be the, op you know, the optimal opportunity for Marinwood, okay? But I would say it certainly bears looking into. Mm -hmm. Um, and making sure that while we were while we were thinking about delivery and we were thinking about staff, we were also thinking about the taxpayers. Absolutely. So um, I would be absolutely in favor of creating this commission or this committee as soon as possible. I do believe because we should also involve um, a member of the employee group and also at least one member of the public. Mm -hmm. We probably will not be an ad hoc committee will probably out be subject to the Brown Act. Will not. Will oh, be subject yeah. to the Brown Act. <laughs> we will have to, you know, hold the meetings in public. Um, but at any rate, um, I'm all in favor of moving forward. I guess the question is, do we have, um, do we ask for qualifications or, hey, I'd like to sign up for this and we evaluate. You want to hear from the fire chief on that one? Yeah. I'm well, <laughs> and, uh, Jeff, you have a, have a pretty strong background in the fire service and as a commissioner, you know, kind of what goes on there. So I would welcome your involvement. And I know Leah has been involved previously on the sustainability committee. I think she just frowned at me when I brought up her name. <laughs> um, I, I, thinking back to the work that was done there, yeah, no. um, she was part of it. There was some good information that was provided. And I think a lot of it's going to be the same. So I would welcome her involvement, and or if I, you, you can come too, but that would be too many, so you're out. <laughs> That's just, I think, and I, and I appreciate he's, that. He's, 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 he's
I think at this point in time, personally, and I kind of jotted this down, it, it, it's really four steps that it needs to go through right now, and that is one, just for the board to essentially establish a committee. I think the committee then needs to have a, uh, a goal or a mission defined. I think then you need to decide on the composition of the committee to the chief's point. Is it one board, one commissioner, two board, two commissioners, how many members of the public, how many of this, and outside of the people that are appointed directly from the board president at that point or his designee, I think you need to define an appointment process. If you're going to bring people in from the public, are they going to apply? Are we going to put announcements out there? Are we going to say, please state your interest and qualifications as to why? I think you should have those things in place because I, I agree with what everybody said. In essence, you can call it an ad hoc committee. Just because you call something an ad hoc committee doesn't mean it's not subject to the Brown Act. This meeting, uh, these are absolutely going to be public meetings that will have to be noticed, that will have to go out 72 hours in advance. The public will be allowed to attend, participate in the same manner that they participate in any other public meeting. Um, for me personally, that's just a little bit of where my head's at. I think, you know, everybody's in agreement you need to form a group of some sort. I think it should be defined. I think it, the composition of that group should be defined and then how people that aren't directly appointed by the board president apply and then become appointed. And the missing board president. Well, we could appoint him. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, I am happy to see this on here. I think it's, you know, the time has come, and I'm happy to help and serve in any capacity. Um, and I think that, you know, I agree with what Eric said about setting up the structure of it. I, it you know, it seems like it would be the next step. And I don't know that we need, this is not an action item per se, is it? Discuss. No, no discuss. discussion item. You know, I mean, I also see that it'd be, if, if there's an action item or something, it'd be nice to have a full board present as well. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> Jeff, that PowerPoint you would put in from 2006, that mm -hmm. kind of, that's kind of along the lines that we want this committee to go, in my opinion, but mm -hmm. maybe if I were to refine that for next month's board meeting, we could come up with an actual appointment of who's going to serve on this in next month. Because as months go by, Mm -hmm. this, we don't want to kick this down the curve. Mm -hmm. this is, no. Let me tell you, 2019, you're not going to be able to find me. You know, it would be, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask the district manager this question. Um, could we start the committee with those people who are appointed and get going and then bring in people who are going to apply and then get approved at a later point, or do we have to wait for that? No, I think right now you basically kind of self-appointed or appointed between the body of the board that Leah and yourself will be on this committee. I think the two of you can work on the things that I just discussed, which are defining the goal, the mission, the composition, and the appointment process. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can be delegated with that authority to do that, at which point, once that's done, uh, we can certainly start putting announcements out there, having the public be made aware uh, and if they could even be turned around by the next board meeting, you could really start looking at the uh, appointment filling those slots. I think the two of you and the two of you alone are welcome to work on this. You are the committee at this moment in time. Greg Stilson from the Fire Commission, also from CSA 13, would like to be a part of this. A so former member was the same. I think at the next meeting is when you will make recommendations uh, for appointments uh, of whatever. You'll come back and say, I think we should have two fire commissioners. I think we should have one uh, member from the uh, active employee group. We should have one member, uh, you know, the fire chief, the district manager, how many people in the public, uh, do you specifically want somebody from CSA 13, or do you want, to, uh, I just think all of those personally should be right. defined so that way you have a very transparent and equal opportunity. And because it's a public meeting, um, we can have guest experts. Of course. Attend. Absolutely. You know, so, and I'm, I'm just throwing it out there, like uh, Todd Kusumano, who's been involved in um, Larch Burn, Cordonera's, whatever we want to call it, is that they're doing. He's been, he was involved in Twin Cities Police Department, becoming Central Marine Police Authority. Um, the city manager of Sausalito has been through this kind of a study when Sausalito and Southern Marin, when Sausalito was trying to figure out what they were going to do. So these are all resources we could draw right. in, you know, as we needed. Very good. Yes. Two comments. Uh, one is 
does any do any of you know of someone who happens to live in the community that may be a, a I don't know, an assistant city manager of Richmond or something? I mean, just some connection that gives them the kind of background that would be helpful well, to us. The gentleman that uh, Chief Rose just mentioned, Todd Cusimano, he's the former police chief of Central Marin Police Authority, and now he's the city manager of Corte Madera, or the town manager, I guess, of Corte Madera. Um, he's gone through this. He was a key in what eventually became Central Marin Police Authority, where it used to be Twin Cities Police Department, and he was heavily... Uh, I don't know about involved, but I'm sure his knowledge was picked uh, as they were working through the Ross Valley uh, uh, <coughs> Corte Madera merger there. I know him personally. I actually grew up with the gentleman. It would be an easy phone call. Does he live in the neighborhood? No. He lives in uh, the North Bay, but okay. he, uh, I just, he works in the neighborhood. Okay, wondering. Uh, the, you, you mentioned whether CSA 13 should or shouldn't have a, a representative on there. I think maybe you're, I would suggest that your next fire commission meeting that you discuss that with the CSA 13 yeah. reps and see what their feeling is. They may have and Greg Stelson volunteered to be the representative oh, okay. from CSA 13 right. and he is also uh, a member of the volunteer force. So I, I actually Greg, wears two hats. Greg, Greg, Greg wasn't necessarily 100% bought into this. Um, we want Greg. You work with Greg. Greg is a smart individual. He's got, again, he wears a lot of different hats, but I think that's something we want to be involved here. He thought that he was so close to it that he might be biased. I said, that's okay. He's smart enough to get by any bias he may have. Um, he, he's someone we want involved in this. He seemed to, he seemed to want to. Well, Next item. Sign up, yeah. From a bigger perspective, if in a couple of nights LAFCO agrees to do the study of North Center Hill mm -hmm. area, uh, there's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be an overlap or a duplication of duties or what? I can tell you that our committee is going to make more headway than LAFCO does over the next six months. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that it would be a duplication. Uh, I do think there would probably be some areas that are intertwined, and I think LAFCO will look at some things that your committee won't, and I think your com this committee will look at some things that LAFCO won't, but I think that they will uh, complement each other, mm -hmm. to say the least. If LAFCO is good. The chief thinks LAFCO is going to go kind of slow at it. No. Maybe when I do, if there a year and a half later. One thing, I, one thing I will tell you, depending on what direction you decide to go with your fire department, LAFCO may or may not have to be involved. And that's a fairly new law. But they may have to be involved. In that well, they'll, ha they'll have to be, they'll be doing their own study, but if you decide to say merge your fire department with a neighboring fire department, there's a state law that requires LAFCO to be a part of that be included in that study and participate in it. Well, that's, that's why I'm saying that. So if they're going to keep their normal procedure going slow, if we made a point of let's do this thing, get it done, and get that as input to LAFCO, mm -hmm. it may then fit together even better. Awesome. 100%. And LAFCO, it's an interactive process, their yeah. study is. So. <laughs> uh, but again, I think getting back to the basics, I think right now you have a two people that have agreed to take this on with Director Naylor, Director Green. You let them get together, you let them lay out these kind of things that we talked about. You have the commission meet the next time and clearly, uh, you know, designate uh, three people to submit to the board as recommended to serve on this commission uh, and you go from there and then we start putting the other stuff out there rather than already talking about what exactly this committee is going to do. So would you then for next board meeting put on the agenda that we will be establishing this committee? I think you've already, oh, to an agree, <laughs> have established the need for the committee. I think, uh, yes, you will formally approve the committee, and with that, you're going to have recommendations from Director Naylor and Director Green as to the composition of the committee, the goal and the mission of the committee, as well as the appointment process of the committee. Okay. I, just, I get I'm concerned now, it's a bit like the funding thing for the kitchen. Yeah, we don't have, have a lot right well, I think you're, you're moving in, in the right direction. Okay. You've already got two committed board members who have past experience doing this that are going to move One fire it. commissioner. Yeah, that chief. are going to move it towards that level. And by the next meeting, you have a full-blown committee. And then once that, you start your appointment process. And then you need to start noticing those meetings. And it'll become a regular uh, point where uh, Leah and Jeff can update the board at each meeting as that moves forward to or as, as it develops or as information is worthy of presenting. And then possibly the next fire commission meeting, another commissioner might 
who is interested might say I'm interested. So we, we did put that out there that because Greg was the only one who volunteered at the commission meeting that I said, hey, if anyone else is interested, let me know. And I ran into Dan Curran who said Curran who said he was interested, and I ran into Tom Ellsbury who said he was interested. So the commission could decide between those two. I think we only need one. <coughs> Anything else on this issue? Steven. Yeah, uh, seeing that you're basically talking about reorganization, I, I was unclear what, what the chief was talking about as far as what he was thinking about. It. Are we talking about just his role or reorganization of the department? I think you're asking the committee to figure that out. <coughs> Is that okay? So, so I, I think before you select the two people, I think perhaps the two board members who aren't here should also have an opportunity to participate and discuss whether or not they want to be on board with it. Um, That's why I asked that it be on next month's agenda. Oh, okay, so I wasn't clear about that. So, um, you know, I, as I look at this problem, I, I see a couple things. First of all, we have an excellent fire department. They do good work. Um, Two-thirds of it, unfortunately, is outside of our district. It's in the neighboring San Rafael. Um, and we don't, so the, the cost is borne by Marinwood, yet we're delivering services elsewhere. So as far as the taxpayer is concerned, what would be ideal is if we pay our proportional share of the excellent service that they provide. I don't know how we get there, um, but it seems to me, instead of uh, speaking specifically about the chief, we first should figure out uh, how we're going to move forward. I'd like to make note of the, uh, uh, the fires that were put out. I, according to pr uh, press reports, we had uh, San Rafael, Novato, and even Larksburg came up uh, to fight the fires. That's great, that's uh, cooperative work. That also says that, you know, regionally we have good strength in our fire protection services. So it's, it seems so obvious to me that we can regionalize, emerge, and, or do something, but we have to fundamentally look at this, and this has got to be part of our financial reorganization as well, so we can uh, meet the, uh, the pension demands of our employees, because uh, I don't think we're, we're going to be able to do it the way we have things structured now. Thank so. you. I, I just like to disagree that it's not a problem we're looking at. We're looking at opportunity, and um, I'll just leave it at that. What, I, I'm sorry, I, I used the wrong word. Also, and that something, that one thing that obviously this committee will study is financially how it will affect the district. So. Yeah. Well, so so the other issues are, you know, Nevada's got uh, very highly paid staff. Uh, uh, I don't know what their pension situation up in Nevada is, but I know uh, San Rafael is in, in a world of hurt, so we don't want to marry our problems into their problems. So, you know, the back end of this has got to be figured out as well. It's very important. Thank you.